Welcome, foolish mortals, to the haunted mansion. On this week's episode, we're talking Halloween Horror Nights news, Hallow Scream news, Walt Disney World news, and so much more on episode 110 of the Theme Park Duo podcast. Prepare yourself for an unforgettable encounter. Hi, and welcome to the Theme Park Duo podcast. Grab your park map, Chiro, and hop in line with us as we take you on a coast-to-coast adventure through the world of theme parks, haunts, conventions, and more. Now, here's your hosts, Nikki and Gabriel. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Theme Park Duo podcast. I'm Nikki. And I'm Gabe. And we are the, the Theme, Theme Park, Park Duo. Duo. Welcome back to another fantastic episode of the show, everybody. Thank you for tuning in wherever you're tuning in from. We appreciate it. Yeah. But we have a fun episode today. We are f- solely focusing on... On the news, I know that in the last few weeks, last few shows, we've had little to no news just because uh-huh. the episodes have been kind of long. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to bombard people with a two and a half hour obligation of listening. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let's, let's cut it down when we can cut it down, have a, a easily digestible episode, and then we'll move on. We'll cover news at some point. Yeah. So that's this episode. We're going to be covering news the entire episode. Some stuff you've probably heard of, maybe some stuff you haven't heard of, stuff that was just announced a myriad of things things that we want to talk about Mm -hmm. it's kind of a a mixed bag of news goodies that range from halloween to just normal theme park stuff yeah and our personal opinions that go along with everything oh of course you gotta throw in the personal opinions gotta upset someone yeah (laughs) my sass has to come out somewhere your what my sass oh thank god (laughs) <laughs> I was like, ooh, not that kind of show, Nikki. You might not want to do that one. Well, it's an audio show anyway, so, you know. Oh, I could hear it. I could hear it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's waste no more time and jump directly into the news. We're not going to do an intro like, news segment because the whole thing is news. So we're not going to do it. We're going right into it. No holds barred news action. So... First one, which is probably the one that I'm most excited about, and you are too probably, is some HHN news for Halloween Horror Nights 30, and that is Jack is back. Jack the Clown returns as the demented face of Universal Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights as the world's premier Halloween event commemorating its 30th year, and select tickets and vacation packages are now on sale inviting guests to stay, scream, and save. Halloween Horror Nights kicks off on Friday, September 3rd, and continues on select nights through Sunday, October 31st, 2021. The most notorious icon in event history, Jack Returns to Halloween Horror Nights 2021, will be fraught with terror and fear as the grizzly circus clown invades every corner of this year's event with unsuspecting jack attacks that will send guests running for their lives his ominous and unrelenting presence will infiltrate every aspect of the event from the streets to the haunted houses to the places guests would least expect leaving nowhere to turn and nowhere to hide Select tickets are on sale now for our Universal Orlando's Halloween Horror Nights, featuring a variety of ways for guests to customize their visit to stay, scream, and save. Guests can save up to $52 on a single night uh, event ticket when purchasing online and book various event upgrades like RIP tours, a guided tour experience that provides priority VIP access to haunted houses behind the screams and masking the uh, horror tour, a daytime lights on tour of haunted houses that offers a glimpse into how the scares are brought to life and more now the one thing that sticks out to me big time is this quote jack attacks uh-huh me too <laughs> that that is that is probably the most exciting thing that i read in that mm-hmm. i mean outside of the idea that jack is back which let's actually touch upon that first we have never been able to see jack in person yeah we've only seen jack in in videos and photos because our first year was 27. Mm -hmm. 27 didn't really have an icon i mean i guess you could kind of say that um what people call bone daddy i guess was the icon remember on on the hollywood boulevard it was the big still walking skeleton dude with like the scythe and everything Mm -hmm. that was kind of i guess the unofficial icon of that Mm -hmm. year now, I w- I'm just, Jack is obviously, like, the top-notch tiered icon, and I can't wait to just experience that kind of enthusiasm and, and character development and just be face-to-face with this character because he looks so damn cool. 
I'm excited too. I mean, I I will be honest. I don't know that much about you know HHN Orlando and like its history with icons and stuff. But Jack is definitely a name that I've heard throughout the years, um, and is like a fan favorite. So I'm excited to experience it too. Yeah, I mean, like I, I don't think I'm necessarily an expert. Maybe I know it a little bit more than you do. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but I mean, like to a certain extent, I, I am no. By means no expert in 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 HHN lore and how all the icons connect or like the backstories of these characters. And for me, it isn't necessarily about getting to learn more about him because I could do that any day. Really, it's about seeing the excitement of a lot of people who love the character and learning why they love him, and also just experiencing experiencing that character at an event. Yeah. Because it just means a lot to a lot of people, and I think that's really cool. And a lot of the time, when it comes to these type of events, it's it's not just the, am I going to get scared and things like that. It's about the experiences that you're having with other people. Mm-hmm. So that really makes a huge difference for me. So seeing my friends who live over there in Orlando and who are huge Halloween Horror Nights fans, getting seeing them get so pumped makes me pumped. It makes me want to go experience it. So yeah. that's a big thing. But this Jack Attack thing, they make it seem like you're going to be taking a dump and he's going to be like, knock, 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 Jack, Jack Attack. attack. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like what is this going to be? I It's probably just roaming, you know? So it's like... It's, like Jack is... Ev- literally yeah. Jack is everywhere. Yeah. What, what if they have multiple Jacks roaming the park so it's not like it's kind of predictable in the sense of well, like... Oh, yeah. Well, there he is. Well, no, I'm sure they'll have multiple because like that, then your chances of seeing him are, you know, very, very scarce. So they'll probably have multiple Jack attacks, but, you know, it'll be unpredictable where they pop up. It could be in any scare zone, any alleyway, you know, they're... they're Heck, he might even show up in the the line queues. Who knows? Well, I mean, do you think he'll pop up in a maze that isn't necessarily a theme to him? That would be amazing. Like I he's didn't just even like think random, and just like like say there's like a dollhouse style yeah. maze, and he just shows up randomly. That would and, be so cool. And it's not even like he has like a dedicated scare spot yeah. or like cubby or or hole or anything. Like it, at any time, he could just walk backstage, go into the maze, and just be there. That'd be really cool. That would, I didn't even think about that. I just thought of him like outside of the mazes, but he could totally pop up in any random house. That would be so awesome. Yeah, I mean, like I, I think that the random nature of that, I think, lends itself to the feeling of unpredictability, which I think it, it sounds like that's what they're going for. Yeah. So if I had the opportunity to do something like that, I would literally put him in every single situation. I mean, outside of a bathroom, Gabe, you would be putting them, putting him like in people's cars on their way home. <laughs> <laughs> just in their yeah. ba- in their backseat. No, like they they drive home, they get inside, they have a snack, drink a soda, take a shower, go get dressed, lay down. They th- it's it's like almost the next day. Jack Jack. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm pretty sure you're just thinking about an episode of Supernatural. Yeah, probably. <laughs> probably one of one of the two. It's one of the creepiest. It's from the first season. It's like the one clown. of the creepy. The clown. Yeah, yeah, he's terrifying. That he's followed terrifying. them home. That's the creepiest episode to me. Well, I mean, imagine Jack Jack Schmidt following home. That's not fun. No. That's not fun. At uh-uh. all. No, 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 no. But uh, yeah, the Jack Attack thing is is probably the most exciting part of that entire description because. Just the idea of Jack just being everywhere and having his influence on the entire event sounds really, really cool to me. Uh huh. So, anyway, that's the first piece of news. On to the next. Okay, the next one is HHN Icons Bar. Cabana Bay's Swizzle Lounge Lobby Bar will transform into the Horror Icons Bar during HHN 30. It will offer specialty beverages and snacks inspired by the event's most famous icons and props and costumes that pay an eerie homage to HHM past. Uh, UO, sorry, Universal Orlando. What? What? <laughs> UO Hotel sounds weird. Gave you shorthand in the notes. Sorry. Universal Orlando Hotel guests also have access to an all new limited time jacked up experience at Universal's Cabana Bay Beach Resort where guests get a closer look into the chaotic world of Jack and some of the sinister environments inspired by his past invasions of HHN. So, we're not staying at Cabana Bay. Unfortunately. I kind of want to now, (laughs) just because of this one 
special experience. Yeah, I know, but I want to experience a different hotel. Oh, I know you want to experience, but we liked Cabana Bay. We love Cabana we Bay. We enjoyed it. We had a beautiful view of uh-huh. Krakatau. Uh-huh. It was it was gorgeous. Yeah. Maybe we could have it again. We could, but we could also experience a new place. No, no. I want I want a jacked up experience. Well, any any Universal Orlando hotel guest can go to this. We just have to go to Cabana Bay to oh, experience yeah. it. I guess you're right. Yeah. No, no, we're cool. Yeah, For we're some reason, fine. I thought it was Cabana Bay guest only. Well, unless you wrote the notes wrong. I might have. <laughs> do, do some research, but I really don't want to switch hotels. Where are we staying? Okay, fine. I forgot. Oh, <laughs> I forgot it's not Cabana Bay, though. Uh, it might be Sapphire Falls or something. Okay. I, don't, I don't quite remember off the top of my head. So, But, I mean, the fact that they're expanding Halloween Horror Nights experiences to outside the parks and in the hotels and kind of just doing these... I guess like B C level type experiences is kind of cool. Yeah, I think it's really fun. I mean, like we're we're and nobody's shocked by this, but we love bars. Uh, yes, we, we loved do. themed bars, mm-hmm. and we've uh, at least I've been to horror themed bars before. So the idea of mixing the history and the icons and the scares of a Halloween Horror Nights with a bar style atmosphere sounds like a lot of fun to me. Yeah. So I, I have no idea what it's going to be. It's exciting to prospect of like imagining it hopefully they're not going to scare me while i'm like in the middle of sipping a drink well no because then you spill and then you waste it and you have to buy a new one yeah inhale my 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 drink by accident yeah like no that's no fun no no not at all but no i i do think it's kind of cool that they're really expanding the offerings in in terms of you know celebrating the 30th anniversary of the Halloween of Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah. And I and I wouldn't expect any different too especially because it's such a big deal around the around like in the community, like, it's a really big deal. Mm-hmm. So it's cool that they're really building these things out and dedicating some time into building experiences that kind of allow the super fans to kind of just linger in the moment, as it were. You know, being able to kind of spend time with those icons and the characters that they've kind of come to know and love. So I think that's really exciting, and I'm excited to be able to potentially check it out. So Yeah. No, we'll definitely pop over. Yeah, we're going to have to. Mm-hmm. So. Next piece of news, and I don't know why, I, I don't know why it came back in the news again. Like, for God's sakes, people. Like, I, I don't get it. But kids at HHN, yeah. it, it popped up in the news again. I thought we were over with this. <laughs> <laughs> it is not a good idea to bring your kids to Halloween Horror Nights. <laughs> don't do it. You know, this, this popped up, uh, maybe it was like two years ago. During Halloween Horror Nights 2019 here in Hollywood, Mm -hmm. where this mom was on this video with her kid in a stroller in one of the scare zones, and the scare actor scared the kid, and people were all upset about mad at the scare actor for scaring the kid. It's like, no. No. She chose to bring that kid to that event. It sucks, because the kid kid probably had no choice, but it's in the description. It's like, no one's fair game. You can't say, oh, scare everybody except for this person. Uh But, like, ultimately... I don't personally think that a Halloween Horror Nights is really an appropriate place to bring a child. No, not at all. Now, I'm not going to shame parents for taking their kids because all kids are different. It's a personal choice and, you know, but you have to take responsibility for whatever happens. You can't blame the workers. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a big part of it is claiming that responsibility of... The consequences of bringing your kid. Yeah. that That's a really big part of it. And like I said, we're not here to shame parents because all kids are different. Like, we've said it many times on the show before. We've seen kids at Scary Farm who were like seven. Yeah, they were having a blast. And having a blast. Like, they were laughing their butts off, running through the fog, getting scared, loving it. Every kid is going to be different. It's very hard to predict how your kid will react at these different events because... You know, watching a video or seeing pictures or hearing about it is very, very different than experiencing it. And uh, T-Lev, another media site, want to give them a shout out because they actually released a couple videos regarding these things. And there was a point that he kind of brought up that I thought was really interesting. And it's that kids can't conceptualize the experience through a video or a photo. Yeah. Like to them, it's, it's, it's extremely different and they can't create... A situation where they put themselves in that experience mm-hmm. without actually doing it. Yeah. Kids can't just do that. And the example he gives is like, well, if you have a toy spider under a jar, to the kid, it's just a, it's a spider. No matter how many times you tell him it's a toy, yeah. to him it's a spider. 
So, like, no matter how many times you tell them it's a guy in a mask, it's still a monster. Yep. So, you know, kids just aren't mentally capable of doing those sorts of things. Yeah. So, it, it really depends on the kid. It really, like, it, it's a hard situation. To me, it's it's a hands down, like, I just wouldn't take my kid. Yeah. I, one, I wouldn't waste the money. Two, I'm pretty sure she'd crap her pants uh-huh. and not enjoy it. And we're trying to slowly introduce her to things that will help her enjoy it when she gets older. It's weird because I don't know what kind of position you would be in to find out that your kid would like it at that age. Yeah. Other than just pulling the trigger and going. But knowing that 90% of the time, it's probably not going to end out well. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's a tough situation. But for us, it's like, just, just leave them just at home. The, yeah, just Get don't. a babysitter. I understand that it's hard and sometimes that's not possible. But then... Then just don't go at all. Just don't go. Uh-huh. I mean, that sucks. But I mean, just don't go. So it's it's a weird situation, but the fact that the topic has come up again is kind of ridiculous in my mind. Yeah. Well, and then that's our opinion on it. It's it it's it's your personal choice as a parent to take your kid or not, but you have to be responsible for what happens to your kid uh-huh. because you chose to bring them. Don't blame the event. Don't blame the scare actors. Don't blame the people doing their jobs, entertaining the crowds. You know. They're assuming everyone who's there wants to be there and are treating them all equally. So I mean, they, they're getting paid to scare people. Yeah. That is literally their job. Yeah. And to get angry at somebody for doing a job just because you don't like it mm-hmm. is a bit silly, in my yeah. opinion. If you, made, if you made a judgment call to bring your kid, kid doesn't like it, just own bite it. The, bite the bullet. Own it and go home. Seriously. Yeah. I mean, like, there have been so many occasions where I've been at Scary Farm. Or Halloween Hornets. I've seen it at both, you know, here in Hollywood, or in California, rather, where I've seen people walk in and then walk out and get mad. Yeah, and just get yeah. mad that they, they can't get their money back. Yeah. You know, they can't get their money back. They're mad that they they left. They want to come back in. Answer is no. Yeah. It's a single entry. You can't get your money back. It's written everywhere. It's on the receipts. You know, it's, it's on everything. Don't get mad at them for you not following the rules. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, I, I don't, to me, it doesn't make any sense at all. There was this one, I remember, I remember one time we went to, this is a little bit of a tangent, but there was one time we went to Not Scary Farm and this group of like teenage girls was there and one of them ran out the exit, the beginning of the night. Yep. And all of their parents had dropped them off. And so they were freaking out because they were all still in the park. One friend went rogue and went outside and couldn't get back in. And so yeah. they were like, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, because like that, the, and like if you're not familiar with Knott's Berry Farm at all, like as you walk in the gates, the exit to the park is directly to your left. Yeah, but immediate the, left. But what's difficult is that like they pack the, the gate full of monsters after they have their opening moment. Uh-huh. All the monsters are sitting up at the gate, scaring people as they come in, like, at the turnstiles like there i have pictures of monsters tapping their gloves on the metal turnstile uh-huh. waiting for people to come up to them and like sometimes they're like making them do like f- like freaking matrix style like bending backwards to get around them uh-huh. and stuff you know so as you turn left you're looking at the exit you have to turn you have to kind of make a turn right to go into ghost town yeah and those monsters are right there. I easily could see someone. I mean, like, we saw it happen. Yeah. I wonder how often it does happen, but s- somebody getting scared, somebody running. Oh, crap, I'm outside. Crap. Yeah. To me, though, I mean, like... it's Well, it's not that... It's not, it's not that easy because like, there's turnstiles and, and there's security guards and there's people and they're warning you and yeah. you have to physically go through the turnstile to go outside. So it's like, well, if you know you're doing it, you know you're doing it. Yeah. Come on. You might not be aware of the rule that you can't go back in, but that's not a mistake you make twice. Well, I mean, you don't know. Like, I mean, like, I was trying to think of a silly example of, like, not knowing a rule, but you still have to face the consequences of yeah. breaking that rule. But, I mean, like, what, it's, it's, a good enough, <laughs> it's a good enough situation in and out of itself. Yeah, it is the example. <laughs> yeah, it is the example. <laughs> you know, yeah. you, can't, you can't get any dumber than that. It's like, can't come back in. There's just no because you didn't, Just because you didn't know about it doesn't mean that now they're gonna bend the rule oh she didn't know it's fine yeah no yeah you broke the rule you left yeah sucks to suck uh-huh. <laughs> play stupid games wins win stupid prizes <laughs> don't run out the exit yep. don't do it so that was actually an interest that was that was a funny story i mean it was like it's it's like the same story of like the couple that came that i told you about where i was up at the gate taking photos of monsters this couple came in where clearly the husband or the boyfriend 
was the fan yeah. and the girlfriend or wife was the person coming to the event for the first time. And she literally went, walked right past the turnstiles, slider hit her, she fell to her knees and was just like in a fetal position <laughs> on like one of the pillars, literally five feet away from the turnstile. <laughs> and the monsters were on their knees, like talking to her in her ear and she just starts crying yeah. and sobbing and saying, I want to leave. <laughs> literally five seconds Aww. into being in there. And the, I just remember him picking her up and going, it's, a, it, it's, it's okay, we'll leave. It's okay. <laughs> it's like Aww. trying to just like console her. She lasted... <laughs> Five seconds. <laughs> Five seconds. So, I mean, that person knew what they were getting themselves into, but that was that's always a great story. Yeah. No, I love those stories. And I feel like they happen at Knott's more than other places. Well, because, like, Halloween Horror Nights here, at least here in Hollywood, like, Nothing they ha- happens right away. Well, they have chainsaw actors that are kind of roaming in the scare zone that's up at the front of the park. But they're not actively standing at the turnstiles like they do at Scary Farm. Yeah. Like, sometimes they'll roam into the front of the fountain and then run back. Yeah. But they're never just sitting there waiting for people constantly mm-hmm. like they do at Scary Farm. Okay, I've seen, like, maybe once, like, a scary actor standing there, but not at the turnstile. Like, he's at the fountain. So yeah. there's, like, a good 15, 20 feet with a space between the person coming in and the scare actor. Mm-hmm. Not... Here's my ticket and a monster looking at me in the in the face as I'm handing my ticket over to get scanned. Yeah. You know, even at Six Flags Fright Fest, like, you have a scare zone there, but not right at the gates. You still have, like, a good 50 yards to the scare zone. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I, I do agree with you. It happens more often in Scary Farm than any other place just because it's no hold barred. Monsters are here. I mean, like, this is what you're paying for. Yep. This is where your money's going to. Might as well enjoy it as much as you can. So... I mean, I appreciate it. It gets me pumped. I love watching people get scared as they walk in the oh, gates. Oh, it's amazing. It's like... You burped. I did. <laughs> I'm going to cut that out at 20, 21, 15. No, leave it. No, I'm not going to leave it in. Why would I leave that in? Because <laughs> it's funny. Fine, I'll leave it in. God damn it. <laughs> You're welcome, everybody. It was a small one, so it wasn't huge. Anyway... Just from my wife's, <laughs> Nikki requested me leaving it in, so I'm leaving it in. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Whatever, Nikki. Anyway. Uh, no, it's 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 one of the highlights of the event is just standing there watching people come in the, come in the gates and get scared constantly. Just people getting harassed yeah. by monsters. It's and, fantastic. And we've been going for so many years. Now half our, half our fun is people watching. Oh, my God. Almost all of it is people watching. Yeah. You kidding me? <laughs> It's like 85% people watching and, mm-hmm. and 15% going through the mazes and experiencing things. Yep. I was almost going to say 25%. That would have been a lot of percentage <laughs> over. That would have been bad. <laughs> I do math good. Math burp. Math do good burp. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Be cautious when wanting to take your kids to Halloween or yeah. nice. So uh, next up on the list, we have a brand new hunt coming to SoCal, and it's Howl a Scream coming to SeaWorld San Diego. A visit to SeaWorld San Diego will turn frightful on select evenings this fall when the park unleashes the all-new Howl a Scream, which, by the way, it's all, it's, it's all new for here, but Howl a Scream has been happening at other parks around the United States for a while now. Yeah. So, um, SeaWorld will offer its biggest and best Halloween celebration in history, including Two amazing offerings, a family-friendly Halloween spooktacular during the day with trick-or-treating, and then as the sun goes down, thrill-seekers will tremble as a transformation of the park into an intense horror-filled haunt during Hollow Scream. Guests will howl, scream, and shriek as they escape roaming haunts ramp- uh, rampaging through the scare zones and seek shelter indoors, only to find they have th- they may have stepped upon a haunted house of horrors. Adventurous, adventurous some guests can deepen the thrills with terrifying coaster rides in the dark, quench their thirst for fear at a fiendishly interactive bar, and feel the monstrous electricity of a live show. Howl Scream is a separately ticketed event, with tickets now available for purchasing start at $40, $40 for a general mission, with exclusive discounts available for past members. The event is anticipated to be an immediate fan favor and terrifying Halloween event with multiple nights of haunted houses, scare zones, roaming zombies, and terrifying shows on select nights. SeaWorld Spooktacular is included with regular park admission and offers fun for uh, for all this fall season. Now, here are some of the elements that are coming to Hallow Scream. Obviously, we got some haunted houses. We got some mazes. 
Hear every blood-curdling shriek. Feel every spine-tickling terror. Get ready for the haunted house's Seaworld's hollow scream. There's no turning back as guests brave dark passageways and round dimly lit corners, hoping they can avoid what's lurking in the depths. The legends are true, the fear is real, and the only way out is to embrace your fear. So the three mazes that they have listed on their website are the Asylum, which is you are the subject of a secret experimental project run amok. Find safety before the doctor finds you. So the doctor is apparently a character because it's in all caps. Okay. Which to me, I'm just like, Doctor Who the doctor? Because I'm not scared of him. I'd rather find him first. That beats on maze. <laughs> the slaughterhouse, an abandoned meatpacking plant with a sordid history, serves up your worst fears. Don't let Simon the Butcher meet you at the end. And then death water by you. Escape the black murky waters of your nightmares only to fall under the curse of the evil swamp witch. Now, Nikki, mm-hmm. to me, these sound very generic, yeah, simplistic themes that we've seen done a billion times. Yeah, it's 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 like your haunt starter pack. <laughs> you're, you're not wrong. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if these were mazes that were recycled from previous Hollow Scream events. That were, you know, kind of like at the bottom of the barrel like, of that year. They get they, they get axed and they get replaced the following yeah. year. So they pack them up and they've sent them to SeaWorld San Diego for a new Halloween event. So these are new for SeaWorld San Diego, but old mazes for other parks. Yeah, and it, that doesn't necessarily mean they're bad. And, you know, you never know what SeaWorld will, will do. You know, maybe add some stuff. So, you know, let's just wait and see. I mean, I, I guess I'm slightly disappointed. Because you're SeaWorld. This is like a... I mean, like, in Orlando, I guess they, they have a hollow scream there as well, I believe. But, And I don't know if they've done this in particular, but you're SeaWorld San Diego. What makes you unique? Oh, all the sea sea creatures and sea life and all that kind of stuff. Why, why do you not have a maze based on, like, people who are, like, mixed creatures of the sea and, and people or humans or something? You know, something that kind of ties directly to what the park's theme is. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that is kind of like a given. Like that's being handed directly to you instead of doing the simplistic asylum and slaughterhouse. I mean, like, I'm almost positive in saying this. Like, I feel so confident in saying this that I'm almost every single haunt that's in the United States and probably outside of the United States have had a asylum slash slaughterhouse style maze. Oh, yeah. We've seen before. it in like almost I mean, every. Literally, Scary Farm had the asylum and the slaughterhouse, the exact same names. Yeah. At their event previously. I feel like even, um, uh, what's the one at Griffith Park? Oh, um, uh, d- d- Haunted Hayride. Haunted Hayride also had an asylum and a slaughterhouse. Yeah, well, they had, a, they definitely thing. had like a slaughterhouse meet yeah. one in 2019 for yeah. sure. But Maybe I don't remember. I don't asylum. remember. Asi- it wasn't asylum, no. No, I do remember like the slaughterhouse one. Yeah, it was like a a meat factory on the edge of town. Family. And, yeah. yeah. Something something to that extent. The, yeah, no, they're pretty they're pretty generic. Um, I mean, yeah, Deathwater no. Bayou sounds interesting. That's very different. You know, it, it for me it's re- very reminiscent of voodoo, at least in my yeah, mind. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm excited about that because I like that kind of a style of experience, or even like a Deadwaters at Halloween Horror Nights 27. Yeah. They had that. So I, I think, think out of the three, I'm more most interested in Deathwater Bayou. My personal opinion for this, like entirely, like yeah, I know other SeaWorld parks have done haunt events, but since it's so fresh and new, and coming right off the back of COVID, I'm gonna give SeaWorld like I'm gonna cut give them a break and you know freshman year, the, the getting their feet wet. Um, let's see what they do and. Hopefully they'll build upon it in in future years. The 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 one thing that I'm really hoping for is that the scare tactics aren't just going to be scream at you. Yeah, that's the only thing I hope for. Yeah, because that's just annoying. Because that's not scary. Yeah, it's we've stupid. seen that before, and it's not our favorite. So. Remember the, I won't say where it's at. Uh huh. But do you remember she was? Oh, I know. Just kind of yeah. sitting there, and we saw uh-huh. her, and then she just screamed at us. Yeah, <laughs> she screamed a word. I don't remember. I don't remember I don't what remember. she yelled at us, but she was. In the pathway, uh-huh. acted like we didn't see her, yeah, and then ran up to us and just screamed, screaming and shaker cans. That was all <laughs> that night was and, screaming and shaker cans, screaming and shaker cans. So I'm just hoping that it's not going to be that that yeah. kind of an event because a, a lot of people rave about Hollow Scream, uh-huh. you know, at Bush Gardens and wherever else it takes place. I just heard really good things. Yeah. So I'm hoping that translates. I don't know in terms of like 
the creativity level and like uh, like who's in charge if those are the same people from that part to this park or are there a new team of creativity on this side uh, the new creative team I, I i don't know you know makeup artists or or prosthetics and things like that are those translating over here are there brand new people over here i don't know any of those answers because a lot of that can affect the end product yeah because i you know i saw pictures of monsters and makeup and i wasn't thoroughly impressed with what the monsters looked like yeah to me it looked slightly like it was trying to be um like a queen mary's dark harbor with the airbrush makeup mm -hmm. but it didn't look quite as good uh -huh. so i don't know i mean i know i'm judging a lot of this based on prior information or like very little bit of things that i've seen so i am going to go into this with with an open mind you know, and, and hoping for the best. But I mean, I'm going to be honest. I mean, yeah, yeah. if I go to this and it's not good, I'm going to be honest. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, it's, I know that you're, you're going to give it a pass. But for me, I'm like, I don't care if it's freshman year. You are charging people money. You should have a good event. Yeah. Period. Like, that's that's as simple as that. Just try not to compare, you know? And that's yeah. the thing is that it, it I do do that. Yeah. And I do it with every event. Literally every single one compare hayride to horror nights halloween to horror nights to scary farm to queen mary to fright yeah. fest like it just happens inevitably and it's hard to not do it because everybody's doing an event so i will have to go into this with an open mind and try not to compare it to things because it's going to be what it's going to be yeah. if that makes sense yeah that's what you i'm know, trying that's each, what i'm each trying event, to say too. each event's unique in, in, in and of itself you know halloween horror nights gives a very particular product scary farm gives a very particular product Fright Fest gives a very particular product. So I'm interested to see what the product is for SeaWorld. Now, it's going to be difficult for us to get down there because it's really far away. Yeah, it'll probably just be you. Yeah, per most likely. Yeah. But I'm interested to see how it goes. We'll see. I'm excited to do something completely brand new. I don't know a single thing about it. Uh -huh. I don't know what the scares are going to be. I don't know where they're going to come from. What the scare zones are going to be. I think that's probably the most exciting part of this entire thing. Yeah. Is the unpredictability of it. Because we've come to know Halloween Horror Nights to a certain extent. We could predict it. Kind of the same thing with every other place. So not knowing a single thing about it. Yeah. Gets me jazzed. Yeah. Really jazzed. Because there's a potential of actually getting scared, which rarely happens. <laughs> so. Uh, moving on, scare zones of roaming haunts. There are no safe zones. There are no places to hide. The scares are everywhere, and the roaming haunts never wake. And there are seven scare zones and four roaming haunts. So when they say roaming haunts, I think they're saying roaming, like, scare groups? Probably. Because yeah. seven roaming haunts sounds weird. Like, it's a big maze on wheels. Yeah. Just, like, roaming around the park. Well, they did say in in the intro you you read, they did say that you're just going to get scared and happen upon a haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> what? That wasn't there before. Why, why am I in a haunted house right now? I don't remember being in here. That, I scared you into one. That uh, <laughs> that uh When you read that, it, it struck me funny. I was like, what? <laughs> the sign said bathroom, and now I'm in a haunted house. I need a pee. Please let me go to the bathroom. Like, no, you don't just happen upon haunted houses. You wait in a line for like an hour for it. You know so. how, for, like, okay, this is, this is totally tangent. How cool would it be if you, if like you go into a store and you're literally buying a bottle of water or some candy or, or, or something and uh, like, like some attendants like, oh, hey, come check this out. Like there's this new thing over here and it's like a trap to put you in through like a haunted house and you that'd don't know. That'd be so fun. Like how messed up would that be? Like just completely random. You don't know when it's going to happen. It, it only happens to a few select people a night. Like, Hey, what's, what's over there? And they just push you in and close the door. That'd be amazing. And you have to walk through it. <laughs> like, and your friends are like, where did, where did Bob go? Where's Bob? Bob. Bob. I, I don't, I don't know where Bob went. That last time I saw him, he went through that door. Like, they open the door and it's like illusion where it just looks like a closet and they close it again. <laughs> like, how cool would that be? That'd, That'd be, be so messed up. So messed up. More Like, the theme of tonight is don't let Gabe plan a haunt. Because <laughs> Jack will follow you home and... Scare you in the morning while you're drinking coffee. Yeah, and you'll end up... Uh, in a broom closet. You'll end up in a broom closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, mops! My worst enemy! <laughs> I'm terrified of mops. They're full of germs. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh no, SpongeBob! Whoa. Oh, those are the worst. <laughs> uh, frightful shows. Even amid so much mayhem, the show must go on. Duck inside and be mesmerized by a raucous, high-energy musical dance show. 
or discover who's behind all the terror looking throughout the park at an outdoor show complete with special effects. Guests will also find DJs and party zones that are perfect for a dance break between fights. So, frights, not fights. <laughs> oh God, I'm going to duke it out with you. I'm going to duke it out with the monster. No, not fights, frights. Uh, so, the one thing that it didn't kind of say in its write-up was who the icon is, because they're kind of alluding to it here. Yeah. In the teaser video, they have like this clown. Yeah. And he almost looked, he almost looked like um, more of like a, and I'm going to be comparing here just so that Nikki kind of gets an idea of what I'm talking about. Do you remember uh, Hollywood Harry from oh, yeah. Halloween Horror Nights? Yeah. Imagine him, but more in the style of like a Queen Mary's monster. Got it. That's kind of what he reminded me of. Okay. So, you know, like the smeared makeup and all the stuff, dirty. Actually, his fingernails were clean. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny because um, the guy who plays Jack the Clown commented on the video and said, like, his fingers are a little clean. <laughs> but, um, but he's kind of like, I guess, the icon of the event. So I think that's who they're referencing. Okay. Is that guy. So... Next, it says monster coasters in the dark and haunting experiences. It wouldn't be a SeaWorld visit without a ride or two, but it wouldn't be Hallow Scream without a dose of nighttime terror. Guests up to the challenge are invited to ride their favorite attractions in the dark. Toast the terror with creepy cocktails, restless spirits, and more at several uniquely themed haunted bars throughout the park. Keep watching to see how this once peaceful park transforms with fear after nightfall. Fans of fear can sign up at hollowscream.com slash CA to be the first to receive more dark details on new ha- new houses, experiences, and more coming to Hollow Scream at SeaWorld San Diego as additional gru- gruesome details are announced. And have you noticed that they're actually calling them houses? They're not Yeah. They're not calling them mazes like every single other event. And I think it's because it's coming from Midwest, East uh-huh. Coast, and coming over here. So they're using the term houses on the West Coast now, which is probably going to throw some people off because yeah. <laughs> they were used to calling them mazes. And everybody on the East Coast is like, why do you call them a maze? I know. Even, it's not a maze. even when we were talking about Universal Orlando um, Halloween houses. Horror Nights, we were, we were calling them mazes. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just the, it's, it's the term that we use yeah. over here. So it easily translates to literally every other experience, regardless of where it is. It's our default. It is the yeah. default, but houses like the same thing for them. It's like, Houses is their default. Yeah. Which, let's be honest, it makes a lot more sense that they're called houses. They're haunted houses. I'll, I, yeah. I'll give everybody that, okay? You, you're hearing yeah. me, everybody who's East Coast? I'm giving you a bone here. Yeah. It makes so much more sense that they're called houses as opposed to mazes, because they're not mazes. They're not mazes. They're not mazes. You can't You can't get lost. There's no multiple choice here. There's not a, do you want to go cool right or left? How cool would it be if they had multiple choice, though? No. Don't let gay plan haunts. No, not cool. <laughs> well, what if you like like traffic jam like, city? But imagine you're like at a crossroads where there's like two paths and there's like a monster like beckoning you to figure out which way to go. I mean, they've done that in Queen Mary. Yeah, in, yeah, in, they uh, have. in the circus maze. So there you go. They, oh, they have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just makes you go through more than once. Exactly. Or like not scary farm when they had trapped and oh, you end God, up spending sixty so more dollars mad. because Gabe thought you could go through the other door. I was so mad. But do you remember we were in it and I was like, No, Nikki, we need to go this way. We have to go that way. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was proven wrong completely and I was so disappointed. Sixty dollars later. But I do remember talking to Jeff Tucker and he was like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I tricked you. He was yeah. one of the guys who who worked on that and designed it. So yeah, it, it definitely worked. Giving the illusion of choice. Yes. It, it yeah. Was a tricky, illusion tricky of choice. Illusion. Thing. Oh, because we were in the like the big pit and he's like, you need to give the key. And I was like, what What if we don't give you him the key? You tried to not though? give the key. Try, don't give him the key because the, the door with all the padlocks on it, we could unlock that. Gabe tried to go rogue. There's a whole new thing. Yeah. But I mean, like how successful of a maze and experience have you created where you are completely like not aware that you're being controlled in every single yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. And where, every where choice the, is, is occupants predetermined. feel like they have a choice. Yeah. Yeah. Like that to me is like top tier experience yeah. where you can manipulate people to that extent. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, uh, overall, I'm excited to see how Hollow Scream turns out at SeaWorld San Diego. I know that uh, we personally at Theme Park Duo have had a tumult, tumult, bleh, tumultuous that word. Uh, experience with the parks with their lack of COVID safety when we went that was pretty pretty disappointing like mm. really bad <laughs> so uh, you know I'm not super excited about going back but at the same time when I did visit last I wasn't uh, I wasn't vaccinated yet 
and now I'm vaccinated. So I feel a lot more safe, but I I still am angry about it, I guess. Yeah. Because it, it just shows a lack of care for guests. Uh-huh. So uh, I guess I'm going to go to this and I'm going to bite the bullet because I want to cover it for everybody and I want talk to talk about it on the show, cover it on the website, do all those things. But, I mean, I'm still a little upset about the company not caring about people. So, yeah. I mean, what can I do at this point? You know, it's things are you're kind of going back to normal, as it were. Uh-huh. So I can't hold on to that anger forever. Yeah, You're going to have to let it go at some point. But moving away from haunts and moving towards food, Ooh. we have some new information coming out about a new place coming to Universal Orlando Resort. Yeah, this sounds really exciting. So, Ben the Bow, Universal Orlando Resort opened an all-new Asian fusion quick-service food venue on Universal City Walk called Ben the Bow. Ben the... Ben the... Did you typo? Yeah, I missed, missed, okay. missed that. Ben the Bar. I was like, <laughs> yeah, cause it was it an says, autocorrect. It says Ben the Bar, and I got really excited. I was like, oh, there's alcohol, too. <laughs> so, no, n- no, Nikki. It's just a typo. So, Ben the Bar features a variety... no, Ben the Bow. <laughs> <laughs> It was an autocorrect. I didn't actually type that. I just want some sake. No. <laughs> so Ben the Bao features a variety of delicious items that fuse popular Asian cuisine with diverse ingredients like crab cakes, pork belly, kimchi, fried chicken, and more, creating an entirely new mashup that bends the idea of a traditional bao. Ben the Bao will be the latest original concept dining experience created exclusively by Universal Orlando. Combining unique theming with an extraordinary twist on the traditional quick service restaurant. Incredibly colorful pop art representing the creatures of the Chinese Zodiac will welcome guests to the venue, where they can grab tasty bao buns like the crab cake bao with Maryland style crab cake, shredded lettuce and mustard aioli, the duck bao with braised duck, kimchi slaw, exo sauce and cilantro, and five spice aioli and more. It all sounds so good. I know it all sounds really good. Ben the Bell will be located on the second level of Universal City Walk adjacent to the Universal Cinemark Theater and will open daily from 10.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. beginning Tuesday, June 15th. So that was uh, over a week ago at this point. So it is open currently yes. at City Walk at Universal Orlando Resort. So go. I'm really excited. Yeah, go. Right go. now. Drop what you're doing and go eat a bow. It's after 11. Oh. Tomorrow. Yeah. Go tomorrow. <laughs> or today when you're listening to this. <laughs> At some time, at t- some time t- at your leisure, go eat. Time at- is all relative. <laughs> Just make sure it's after 10.30 a.m. and before, before 11, 11 p.m. <laughs> yes, that one. Um, I'm excited because I-, I love Bao. There's actually yeah. a Bao restaurant not too far off from our Universal Studios. Now, obviously, it's not at City Walk. Yeah. But it's it's down the way in in, uh, in the valley called Take a Bao. Uh-huh. And we've eaten there a few times. And I love Take a Bao. It's good. So I'm excited to try this bow at city walk when we go and visit in orlando in october so very excited for some food next up on the list we have reimagined guest rooms at disney's contemporary resort as walt disney world prepares to celebrate its 50th anniversary this october walt disney imagineering is continuing to build continuing to build on the optimistic spirit of disney's contemporary resort enhancing the retro modern aesthetic evoking tomorrowland with a dash of something incredible too, <laughs> it's an it's an italics, so it's it's referencing the Incredibles. Yes, you can't see that, <laughs> but hopefully you got that through my. <laughs> well, I think they got it. I think they got it when he flat out said it's referencing the Incredibles. Yeah, well, that, that yeah that too. That, yeah, that helps. <laughs> yeah, that helps a lot. <laughs> Currently, all nine floors of guest rooms in the tower are being completely refurbished, and here's a first look at the new decor debuting this fall. As you can see. You can't because you're listening to it, but you can look it up. It's it's on the Disney Parks blog. As you can see, these rooms will blend a sleek monorail motif with some favorite characters from Pixar Animation Studios' Incredibles films, including Jack Jack, Fro- uh, Frozone, and Edna Mode. New custom artwork in uh, guest rooms and along with guest corridors will be modern, futuristic, and oh so stylish, darling. Completely <laughs> com- <laughs> complementing the resort's architecture while putting the superpowers on display. In the lobby, you'll soon see a collection of modern art pieces as well as historical behind the scenes photographs of Disney's contemporary resort, <laughs> resort in development and under construction. The resort's lobby restaurant, The Wave of American Flavors, will also soon close to make way for a reimagined dining experience. 
uh, in time for the Walt Disney World 50th anniversary celebration. And once the tower guest rooms are complete, work will begin on the rooms inside the garden wing out of the shore of Lake, uh, out on the shore of Bay Lake. All the excitement at Disney's Contemporary Resort is part of the ongoing evolution of the Disney Resort's collection at Walt Disney World, where the magic you find in our theme parks extends to every moment in your vacation. We'll have more to share on this project in the months to come as we get ready for the world's most magical celebration beginning October 1st, so keep checking back with us here at Disney Parks Blog for all the details. Now, I included pictures of the rooms uh, for us to look at and kind of comment on. Now, I guess the first question that I'm, I'm going to pose to you, Nikki, is do you give a crap that they're including IP characters? Does it make you mad that they're including IP in these hotel rooms? No, not at all. Same here. Yeah. Don't care. I think it's cool. Yeah, I, I think like it's it. fun. Like, I'm seeing a picture here where it's like the in the back of the closet, it, it looks like the Super Suits of the Incredibles. Is yeah, like they're, like they're hanging up. Like, yeah. that's so cool. You open a drawer and it's like there's Incredibles stuff in the bottom, like, well, like, the, the, like the remote for Mr. Incredibles' car. car. Yeah. Yeah, there's also like glasses and like a note. Even the bathroom yeah. has like, uh, looks like laser etchings of a, uh, of like a monorail or something on it. So, you, you yeah. know, everything's seen. Pillows are themed. I think it's really neat. Yeah, it's really cute. So why not make it fun, you know, like that, and it, when it still fits the theme of the contemporary resort? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I guess, like, the thing is, for me, is, you know, it's it's clearly an upgrade from what it used to be. Yeah. If you look at photos of what the contemporary resort used to be and what these have done now, it's such a clear example of what the hotel room should be doing and what they should look like. For me, like, if I'm going to a Disney resort and I'm staying in a hotel room, I don't want it to look like a hotel room that I could stay in on, on like, the interstate. Yeah. I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be special. I want it to be different. I want it to include the magic. And like they said, the magic that's in the theme parks, I want it to feel like it's in the hotel room with me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like what they did with this is a really good example of how they're capable of doing that. With those small little nods, like we mentioned, you know, opening the drawer and seeing the laminate bottom that looks like there's things in it. Or seeing the costumes hung up in the closet and things like that. Those are all special little things that make the experience of staying in the hotel that much more special. Yeah. Now, the thing is, is that when it comes to going to Walt Disney World... You, most of your time is not going to be in the hotel room at all. You, literally, it's just a place to sleep. You're not spending any time in your hotel room other than sleeping. Yeah. So I understand why people are probably like, it doesn't need to have IP in it. It's it's unnecessary. Totally get it. I personally am one to believe that the any experience that's happening on a Disney resort needs to be taken to the next level. It can't be something subpar or something you could find elsewhere. Yeah. It needs to be unique to the park and i feel like that is exactly what's happening yeah i love everything that's happening in that room and i think it's fun i also think it's designed in a way that looks sleek and new without looking dated uh -huh. because all the stuff in the incredibles looks kind of tomorrowlandy ish like with, yeah. with its angles and stuff but it's taking place in the 50s so i feel like it it can uh last kind of a long time without feeling dated yeah I agree. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so I'm excited about that. I honestly wish they do that to more parks. I mean, or to more of the hotels. I, I, I we stayed at Port Orleans Riverside. Yeah. And at least in those rooms, they had, you know, pictures of Tiana and pictures of, you know, the the Bayou where she was in the movie and certain things like that. So at least we had those. So people who are being moaning about IP being included in a hotel room. It already is. It already is, yeah. You're at a Disney park, so why are you complaining? Literally everything has IP in that sense. Yeah. You know, Mickey's IP. It's an original IP. Yeah. But it's still IP. Yeah. If you but don't I mean, want IP, stay off, stay off property. <laughs> <laughs> go, go, to, go to some other park that doesn't have anything, but every park almost usually does include yeah. something. Yeah. But Go stay at Cabana Bay. <laughs> like, what, <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> nope, sorry. Icons Bar, that's IP. Oh, dang. Oh, dang. <laughs> um, no, I mean, like, I don't know. I think it's a silly argument. I understand that people don't like it and, and people want originality, which I want originality, but I want originality in attractions. I don't care about the hotel rooms. Yeah. As, long as, as long as it's comfortable, it looks cool, and it feels special, thumbs up for me. I agree. And I, and I love this stuff. Like it, it feels like a Disney experience, and that's yeah. what I want. Yeah. So I think, it's, I think that's really important for me. And hopefully they do this to a lot of the hotels. You know, hopefully the... 
Um, the Grand Florine gets a little bit of an upgrade in its rooms. I know that the, uh, the, the rooms in the hotel in general at the Polynesian are in dire need of an upgrade. That is, that's an old hotel. So, yeah. you know, obviously they have, they utilize Stitch there a lot. So, you know, maybe including Stitch and things like that in the bedrooms. I don't know. You know, it would be really cool to see them kind of take care of those hotels first. Yeah. In that big circle tour with the monorail, then kind of go to the other hotels afterwards. Like in terms of like the, I guess the, the value resorts. So like art of animation and things like that. I don't think those need to be like incredibly special. No. I mean, it'd be nice if they did add those touches, but I understand because they are value resorts. Like it, it is what it is. Yeah. But like that main circuit of hotels there on that monorail strip right by Magic Kingdom, those need to be special. Yeah. Those, those have to be special. You need special. to get your money's worth. Exactly. Because those are really expensive hotels to stay at. Really expensive hotels, yep. anything like that, you know. I want to make sure, I'm, like, if I'm going to Walt Disney World, I'm spending thousands of dollars. My hotel room better look it. Yeah, it better look it, you know. And I feel like, at least in this design, it makes it feel a little bit more special. Yeah. So, but that brings us to the end of the episode, everybody. We we covered some news. Hopefully, you heard some stuff you hadn't heard of before. Some details, things like that. You enjoyed our perspective on the news that we covered. We love talking about this stuff because it it kind of just allows us to kind of have a free form episode like there's no structure there's no overarching topic or anything you know what i mean yeah like it's just a nice open dialogue conversation about themed entertainment yeah which i really i, I really like these episodes for that reason i yeah. like just chatting like, with you for an hour and you're not like dedicated like okay here's my list i yeah. made a list i had to do research for this you Stressful. just sit here and just chat yeah just talk about all yeah. of it because like half of the fun of the show is just being able to have a conversation about it. Yeah. Not the list. Like, although the lists are fun and the history episodes are fun, this is what's appreciated, at least on our end of things. Yeah. And it's like, usually when we, when we do news, it's like we, we have stuff to say, but we either don't say it or we keep it really short because we know we have something else to get to. Yeah. But this just gives us an opportunity to just talk about it. There have definitely been episodes where we say everything that we want to say about oh, it. Oh, yeah. And those episodes are long. They are very long. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes very... sometimes you, we just have to talk about the news. Admittedly, most of them are the ones where Nikki gets angry. And <laughs> she just goes on a tangent and starts talking. That's, which that's happens not, every now and again. That's not untrue. Yeah. <laughs> Feisty Nikki comes out and she cannot be controlled. She can be edited out by Gabe, but yeah. you don't do that. All not, the time. not often. No. I think there have been like a few times where I've cut stuff out and like, that can come off wrong. Yeah. I'm going to cut this out. <laughs> that's probably, that's probably wise. But not, not very often. I'm usually no, no, pretty no, no, PC. At all. Yeah. Well, not even necessarily this PC. It's just like, you're just on a train of thought and you say something like, I'm going to cut that. That's fine. <laughs> that's fine. You edit me. That's fine. That's fine. I mean. We're not editing me burping this episode, so no, there you go. I mean, it happened. because of my request. Yeah, well, Nikki requested to not edit it out, so uh, congratulations for well, everybody Gabe's, listening. Well, Gabe's in control of everything editing-wise, and sometimes he cuts out stuff that I think is super funny, and then I get bummed. What? Yeah. You never tell me that. Sometimes. Yeah. Every now and again, there's jokes that I have to cut just because, like... It's long they're, they're episode. Not even necessarily or, that. There's yeah. just, from an editing standpoint, I need to have connective tissue in order yeah. to make the edits make sense. Yeah. And if I don't have that, sometimes I have to cut more. Yeah. Just to have those pieces so that it could kind of connect everything. Yeah, no, and I totally get that. I so, totally I mean, it's that. just, it, it's not necessarily, uh, like, cutting it out because I don't like it. It's just a means to an end. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, it just is what it is. So, it's the world of editing. I love it so much. It's, it's the best. Hey, you made it your career, and then you also chose to do a podcast for fun. Yeah. So, you don't get yeah. to complain. Uh, <laughs> you're not wrong. You're definitely not wrong. I definitely put myself in this position. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we're gonna end this episode. Actually, one last thing before we before we end. I know that we have teased a lot about a giveaway for reaching 100 reviews. We're at 127 reviews. We are doing a giveaway. I'm trying to wrangle up the last few pieces that I want to include in it. So I can tell you now what I'm trying to do, so that you guys know what I'm doing, and the giveaway isn't like a huge surprise, but. I actually own a print of the Mystery Lodge at Knott's Berry Farm. It's it's poster. I yeah. own a print of the poster, yeah. which you can't buy anymore at the park. They have one up inside the store that's right by Mystery Lodge. And it's a frame, which, by the way, that store is closed because the, the, the show is closed right now. Yeah. It's up there in frame, but you can't buy it. You can't get it anymore. So I was lucky enough to get a print 
uh, after we interviewed um, Bob Rogers on the show. So he actually gave me a print of that. I want to personally create another print so I could include it, that in the giveaway. So that's what's kind of taking the longest, just trying to find a place to do it and for like a reasonable price, things like that. So I want to include that. It's going to include uh, masks, pins, magnets, uh, things, uh, a pop. Uh, there's going to be a lot of things. And the reason why I'm saying a lot of things in it, and it's because we also have a Walt Disney Pictures backpack that I'm putting everything in. Yeah. So there's a lot of things going on in this giveaway and it is going to happen. I just have to get that stuff done first and we will be doing the giveaway. Trust me, everybody. It is going to happen. Yes. It's going to happen. I'm tying up the loose ends and you will see it posted on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, everywhere. We will post it and someone, some lucky guest is going to get it. So there you go. With that being said, are you guys following us on social media? <laughs> Hopefully you are. <laughs> You know, you can find us at Theme Park Duo on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> I send them in a different order than I normally do, yeah. so I confuse myself. <laughs> so you can follow us everywhere on social media at Theme Park Duo. If you guys haven't already, the free way of supporting the show, head on over to iTunes and leave us a five-star written review. Like I said, free way to help uh, support the show. You know, we, we don't charge people money here. We're not... On Patreon, we're not doing all these things. You know, we, we sell shirts. You know, we and the link is in the description of these episodes where you can go buy some shirts that we've created. You know, theme park duo shirts or hunt shirts, things like that. You can go do that. But doing a review is probably the biggest way of supporting us because it makes us go higher up in the standings. It makes it easier for everybody to find us and enjoy us like you are right now. So make sure you go ahead and do that for us. And if you want to reach out to the show, questions, comments, concerns, things you want to hear about, things that you don't want to hear about, if you want to include more burps in the episodes or not, <laughs> you can always email us at themeparkduo at gmail.com. Thank you everybody again for enjoying our nonsense in this week's episode. And always remember, there's, there's always, always a, a great, great big, big, beautiful, beautiful tomorrow. tomorrow. See, See ya! ya. Thanks for riding with the Theme Park Duo. Make sure to gather all your belongings before the end of the podcast. Bye-bye.